today, I have to confess, I'm not going to be talking about a, a novel idea, a big idea. I'm going to be talking about something very, very basic. As basic as life itself, right? As basic as movement and balance and equilibrium. <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about this little thing, or using this little thing, the DNA that we cannot even see, that is a part of all of us. This is who we are to a great extent. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm going, to do it, I'm going to do this is because this is a symbol from the people from Central Mexico. It's called the uh, Nahui Olin. And so this whole idea of balance, this whole idea of life, life Balancing itself is about, this is about as close as we can, get, that we can get to the normal, right? And so I've been following this thing and, and studying and understanding it for a long, long time. In fact, I believe that we, as human beings, we struggle very much to find balance. And when you look at the state of affairs in the world, what we see is a lot of confusion. It's a lot of conflict, right? There's a lot of words in one place. Economics is going crazy. Um, police brutality. They want to build cities where there is no water. And so, you know, when, when, we, when we look at the DNA, when we look at the formation of life, certainly there's no mistakes and there is no shortcomings. And if they were, we would all be that. How today in, um, in our society, one that we can claim and we can boss that is one of the most advanced societies, not only technologically speaking, right? But we also have social media, virtual systems, the internet. Um, in fact, we call it the information society, right? But yet, we seem to be missing the point. We continue to miss the point. And so, so let, me, let, me, let me drive you to my journey and how I actually came to worry about these things. <clears throat> Back in 1999, when I graduated from the University of New Mexico, from the Associate Department, um, my first task was to work in Latin America. And my job was to help um, develop the uh, knowledge society and the information society in Latin America, right? And so we were, we had this thing called, uh, well, actually we had this idea, we were promoting this idea of government, academia, and industry coming together and helping set up the knowledge society. Research facilities to advance microelectronics and all these things. And when I was doing, when I was working in Latin America, a lot of people were very skeptical about me. And I couldn't blame them. I was very skeptical myself. Even though we were talking about these great things, and I don't know if you remember, but technocrats will talk about $100 computers and that these $100 computers were going to level the play field. We're just giving computers and everything is going to be okay, right? But nothing changed. Nothing changed, right? In fact, 9 11 came, the uh, dot com um, uh, crash came, and the uh, financial crisis, and all these things. And so, I was, very, I was very concerned because this is the image that came to my head every time I talk about the Knowledge Society. What happened? No? And so, as I, as I aim to understand the whole idea behind these strategic relationships, I couldn't avoid but think about the fact that something was missing. And in reality, I couldn't tell why. What is it that it was missing from this thing, apart from the fact that all you see is big entities, right? And uh, one day I was driving to Idaho with the medicine man, and he actually said, nephew, you, know what, you want to know what's wrong with this? This is a formation of threes. Then I thought, I, I, I um, remembered the DNA, and I'm like, yeah, this is an incomplete picture, right? This doesn't represent movement. This represents relationships, but I cannot see myself. And the reason why, the reason why is because our world is actually three-dimensional, okay? And so, so when I came to understand these things, go ahead. Then I also noticed that our world is based on forces, 
not on, not on just institutions. We have to work within these forces, cultural forces, political forces, economic forces, bring it all together to find equilibrium and perspective. Okay. And then this thing came, trickle-down economics. It all made sense, right? I mean, it did, but it didn't. Why? Because this is a fallacy. People will indirectly benefit, or poor people will indirectly benefit as industry, academia, and government make it happen for us. So it's a fallacy, okay? It doesn't work like that. And so this is how I actually came to reject a little bit these this notions of trees. Go ahead. <clears throat> and the reason why is because when it comes to the DNA, there is no halfways. One little piece, one little piece, and we die. Okay? And so when we look at the, uh, the meaning of sustainability, right, then we see few, uh, present without forgetting about the future. We're looking into the future. We're not just looking into the uh, present. We have to look way into the future. We have to look into the future of your generation and their generation generations and their generation generations. Okay? And if what we're doing today is not going to sustain life then, then let's change things around. Not just, not just for our sake, but for the sake of the future generations. We live in a wonderful planet. We need to think that far. We need to go back to think in a three-dimensional model, right? And so this is how then I came to, by mistake, because I don't know much about chemistry, but by mistake, in a, in a book, I found the uh, formation of the silica tetraedra, right? And wow, for me, it made it all, all, you know, it, it really brought me that understanding. Why? Because I'm not neglecting the government, industry, and academia. It's actually something that we need, we do, right? But it's to limit that. And this gave me that, that idea, right? And, and so, and not only, not only because it has the whole formation, all the pieces, it's because, I don't know if you guys know, but silicon, it binds together, right? And it binds really strong, and it's all over the place, right? And so, I couldn't avoid but to give credit and give the reason to Noam Chosky. What we have right now with this whole model is an institu institutional stupidity, okay? Why? Because this, is only, this thing is only focusing on, on, on entities up here that are hoping to bring it down here, and it's not happening, folks. So we really need to think about that. And this is how I came to, oops. Okay, well, that line should be there. But this is how I came to <laughs> develop this thing that I call the, the uh, quadruple helix, okay? The quadruple helix of strategic alliances, where we still have government, which we need, we have industry, which we need, we have academia, and we have non-for-profits, okay? And so we also, and there we are, we are the core. And so we need to bring all of these things together why? Because it's time that we give power to the people. And that is, we give uh, power to ourselves, and we give power to all of us so we can create a sustainable uh, world that future generations will be able to enjoy. Thank you.